You know, a few days back, actually a few weeks back, in a live chat, someone asked me, do I find it funny when people who choose the 40 Smith & Wesson as their carry round will often say they chose it because it's a great compromise between the 9mm and the 45. And you know what? I do find that funny when people say that, and I do hear people say that, because the 40 Smith & Wesson is not a compromise between the 9mm and the 45 ACP. It is more powerful than the 9mm, and it's more powerful than the 45 ACP. It just is. It's not anywhere in between the two at all. It outperforms the 45 ACP in pretty much every way. Now, the 45 ACP can often handle a heavier bullet, but when you factor in the lower velocities, that heavier bullet doesn't hit with as many uh, foot pounds as the lighter bullet does out of the 40 Smith & Wesson. Like 165 grain 40 will hit harder than 180 grain 45 ACP. And because they're a smaller bullet, a more bonded, more powerful bullet, they tend to perform better when they hit barriers too than the 45 ACP. The wide flat face of the 45 ACP, especially with hollow points, tends not to do as well with hard barriers as the 40. The 40 is just not weaker than the 45. So I don't know why people think that. Now I think a lot of people are pushed into thinking that by these jackasses that like to say, oh, the 40 Smith & Wesson is the 40 short and weak. Uh, they say that because it's shorter than a 10 millimeter and weaker than a 10 millimeter. Well, yeah, it is weaker than a 10 millimeter, but it's, uh, and it's shorter than a 10 millimeter, but it's longer than a nine millimeter and more powerful than a 45 ACP. I mean, if you use that same logic, you'd have to say, well, since 357 Magnum is not as powerful as 44 Magnum, then it's not 357 Magnum, it's 357 Magnum or something, you know, I don't know, something really ridiculous like that. Just simply because there's another round that's more powerful than it. And yeah, the 10 millimeter is more powerful than the 40 Smith & Wesson. But that was the problem with the 10 millimeter. A lot of people couldn't handle it in a semi-automatic gun. It was too much for them. So the 40 was a, a, a round they made based on the 10 millimeter that was more manageable in most people's hands. And sometimes a less powerful round that manages better is more effective than a more powerful round that you can't manage very well. So it is not short and weak. There's nothing short and weak about it. Uh, it, it it's also definitely, like I say, not between the nine millimeter and the 45 ACP. A lot of people like to put it there simply because it's a 40 and then there's 45, so it's lower number, so obviously it's in between. And it is a physically smaller around than the 45 ACP and physically larger than the nine millimeter, so they think it belongs there in the middle. But if you were ranking them by performance, the 40 would be after the 45 because it's more powerful than the 45. Now, you can get 45 ACPs in plus P configurations, which get up and match the 40 and even uh, exceed the 40 Smith & Wesson in the standard loadings, but you can get 40 Smith & Wesson in plus P loadings that start outperforming the 45 ACP plus Ps. So in the end, the 40 is still more powerful. And plus, another thing you might want to keep in mind about those 45 ACP plus Ps you see, pretty much every manufacturer that makes them puts a nice little disclaimer disclaimer on their page that says, hey, if you're going to buy more than one box of these and then you're going to actually shoot them through your carry gun, you might want to change this, 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 and this so that your gun doesn't blow up on you. So the guns just aren't made to handle those rounds from the factory. So you got to do some changes. And most people are dealing with right off the shelf ammunition and right off the shelf guns. So they are better to stick with standard 45 ACP and standard for a uh, standard 40 Smith & Wesson. That way they're not running into any performance problems. And when you do that, you're still going to be a winner with the 40. It's going to be a more powerful, more potent round. It's going to perform better. Uh, like I say, it's going to hit with more force pounds over less area. It's going to penetrate better. It's just better. Especially a bonded 40 caliber bullet is just going to be a better performer than a 45 ACP. Uh, it often feeds a lot better in a lot of rounds too, since it's in a lot of guns too, since it's not as big a face on it. So it's just, in my opinion, better at most things than the 45 ACP. And on paper, it's better than most things. That's just a fact, not an opinion. On paper, it's better at most things than the 45 ACP. So it definitely doesn't deserve to be in between those two because you gotta think, the 40 Smith & Wesson might be short and weak, people like to say, but a strong 40 is getting right up in there in the beginning territory of 357 Magnum range. That's definitely not weak. Now the 10 millimeter, the bigger version, of course, will get right up in there with the more potent 357 Magnums, but the 40 getting into the lower 357 Magnum range means it's definitely not weak. So in the end, the 40 Smith & Wesson definitely isn't a short and weak round. Like I say, it's longer than 9mm, more powerful than the 45. So it's not short and weak. That's just ridiculous. It's something people like to say because they think it sounds funny.
And it's definitely not between the 9mm and the 45 as far as performance is concerned. It will outperform both of them. So in the end, I have to say the 40 Smith & Wesson is not a good compromise round. It's just a good round, period. In fact, it's one of the best carry rounds you could possibly choose.